So, uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, today, uh, this is the second day of phase two of the workshop. Yesterday, you saw a lot about what you did across the first phase and you had feedbacks, peer review sessions and also you had your first hands on, full hands on activity in wiki wherein you reviewed some of the contents. So, it was a mini class assignment. So, use of wiki for a mini class assignment. So, today we will just shift focus to traditional classroom uh, practices that is a face to face class uh, classroom instruction. So, now we are going to look at the effective integration of visualization using active learning. So, re uh, recall that you had already discussed the what, why and how of learning objectives. You wrote learning objectives for a topic in your class. You also classified visualization in on the second day uh, based on V's graph, on the purpose and the topics. You also went and looked at some of the visualizations and there was an online assignment where you did visualization integration completely in unguided fashion. That means, you found a visualization you wrote learning objectives for that particular visualization and came up with a first cut strategy to integrate visualization in your class. So, first cut strategy is what you have uh, uh, the raw strategy that you think you are having. So, what we are going to, uh, so a majority of the responses that we received, the responses varied like teacher will play, he will show, so I will use, I will show this particular visualization. I will play it, I will pause it, that is all. And uh, what students had to do was just watch and ask for clarification if needed. So, this is a majority response. There are exceptions where you have tried to mix some active learning strategies in between. So, a quick question, uh, this is a yes or no poll. You can uh, give your answers through a view. Uh, do you think that the strategy, so the strategy is like showing visualization, just showing demonstration, is it an effective strategy? So, participants vote individually either yes or no and uh, you, uh, the remote center coordinator, you can convey the majority response through chat. So, the question is the strategy of just showing the visualization, will play, show, demonstrate visualization, is it effective? Okay, I am seeing a lot of yeses. So, by strategy we mean just demonstration of visualization. Okay, there are lots of yeses. So, let me just move to a the think pair share. Uh, this is a think pair share activity. So, you all are saying that it is effective. So, now we will try to see what is the meaning of effective. So, within your remote center, individually think what you mean by effectiveness. So, you can take a minute write down. So, supposing you are just demonstrating visualization in your classroom and you feel that this is going to be effective. So, what do you mean by effectiveness of visualization, showing visualization in your classrooms? So, people who are arguing that it is not, you can also tell why this strategy is not effective and what are the criteria of effectiveness for you, which makes showing visualization not effective. Okay, so let us now move to the pair phase. You can take three minutes. So, you will have uh, your uh, partner along with you. Discuss your definition of effectiveness with your neighbor. So, do you agree with your neighbor's definition? Together, agree upon two possible definitions uh, of effectiveness. So, you can take three minutes to do this activity. So, a quick uh, guideline. So, effectiveness 
you have to have just like learning objectives be specific and be precise. So, just saying achieving learning objectives is a uh, it is a broad term. So, look for what you are teaching in your topic and specifically say what do you mean by effectiveness. So, for example, uh, if you ask me what is effectiveness of visualization in my session that is this session that we are having, I would say that the moment I show you a video and ask questions, I get 100, uh, 130 responses from the 150 centers. So, make sure your uh, responses are as specific as that. So, now let us move to the share phase. So, you can take 5 minutes, participants share your definition of effectiveness with your fellow participants within the remote center. The coordinator share top 3 definitions through a view chat, I am already receiving some of them. So, I will just go through some of the definitions in a minute or so. You can start populating the definition of uh, effectiveness within your remote center through a view chat. Okay, uh, let me just go through some of the answers that you have already provided. Silicon Institute of Technology Bhubaneswar, they have given me the definition that effective means students will be able to analyze and solve the problems related to the demonstrated topic. So, yes, I think uh, you are on the right track, you have specified what the students will be able to achieve and what is the measure that you are having of effectiveness. To motivate the learner, this is a valid measure, uh, measure of effectiveness, this is coming from CDAC NOIDA. And there are other which talk about uh, students should have better understanding of the topic. There is one which says, so this is from RC Patel Institute of Technology, Shirpur, which says that interaction is required. So, I think this RC uh, is of the opinion that just demonstration of visualization is not effective and there should be some interaction that is needed. Students are able to implement what they are taught. So, again uh, achieving the learning objective is a broad uh, measure of effectiveness, clear understanding of the operation of the system and solve the problem. That is a specific uh, objective. Okay, 70 percentage of the class should give desired answer, interaction level should be high. Okay, this is a valid measure of effectiveness. This is come coming from Thakur College. Okay, so uh, a quick summary of what is meant by effectiveness. So, you can see many of you had already given feedbacks as to what is uh, effective according to you and again it is an open ended problem. Uh, the uh, What is meant by effectiveness depends on teachers goals and the learning objectives set by the teacher. So, if the teacher's goal is to motivate the learner by showing visualization, yes, it is a valid measure of effectiveness and you already have specified learning objectives which uh, are specific and precise and if you want to measure those at learning objectives, those learning objectives, then you will have to speak in those terms. So, what I am going to do now is show you a summary uh, of the about the purpose and effectiveness uh, which are from different perspectives. You already saw uh, some of it, uh, a part of it during the learning objectives and other one. So, I will show you a small video uh, which describes about the purpose and effectiveness and the different perspectives that come into picture. So, if you look at purpose of a strategy, of a teaching strategy or effectiveness of a teaching strategy. One way of thinking about effectiveness is that the teacher can cover the syllabus faster or by using visualization the teacher can use more technology. And yesterday, in a, yesterday afternoon session when we asked you why use visualizations, we got a lot of questions like, a lot of answers like this. Today, in fact, I am happy that I am not seeing many of these. Because these kind of purposes or reasons for effectiveness are something that we want to avoid really. 
covering a syllabus faster, you should not be using visualizations for that purpose only. So let us not discuss that part at all. In, instead, we will look at effectiveness from the perspective of students learning or understanding of the content in a better fashion. So another pers perspective on what is an effective strategy or what is the purpose of a strategy comes from the point of view of the topic. Again, you may recall this from yesterday that where in most engineering domains, there are some specific uh, reasons related to the topic why it is a good idea to use visualization. So for example, to make any invisible elements such as atoms, fields, internal working of a machine, to make it visible, you can only do it with an animation. One can't take a picture, one can't see it in real life. So an animation is absolutely necessary to make invisible elements visible. To try to analyze motion of objects, trajectory of objects, dynamic changes in systems and so on, again animation or videos, here videos also might work, uh, uh, could be useful. So there is a whole set of reasons why to use visualizations from a topic perspective. And finally, there is the perspective of what the students should be able to do, such as students should be able to explain the reason, they should be able to draw different representations of a process. In engineering especially, uh, we want students to convert between a graph and an equation and actually what is happening in the system. So for those visualizations could be useful. So now, when you think about strategies to use a visualization, which strategy should I use, will the strategy be effective, what you should start thinking about is effectiveness criteria related to the topic or the content and effectiveness criteria related to students performance. And then we will ask, then you, you should ask this question about your own strategy and let us ask this question re related to the strategy of demonstrating the visualization. That will showing a visualization in class help achieve the learning objectives and the uh, content specific goals that we discussed a moment ago. Okay, uh, so what Professor Sahana Murthy was doing in that particular video was summarizing the various perspective as in there is a teacher centric approach or a teacher centric perspective where teacher says uh, these visualizations will help to speed up the uh, cover coverage of topics or can use teacher can use more technology. There is uh, a content centric approach wherein it looks at the content and identifies the characteristic of the topic that is going to be discussed and then look at the measure of effectiveness. And there is a student centric view where we look at what students have to learn. So a majority of you have already aligned yourselves to the student centric view based on your uh, the chat responses. So most of you are telling that students need to learn about something, the learning objectives have to be achieved, uh, uh, they have to do, uh, perform some task, they have to solve problems. So these all come under student centric view. Now just think about this. What I did just now was a demonstration of a visualization, visualization in terms of video. Tell me how effective was demonstration of this video in understanding the various perspectives. So think about it for a minute. You can respond to it. So I just played video in front of you. I did not do anything. It is a simple strategy. So the question that I asked the strategy of demonstration of visualization. So I demonstrated video which is an example of a visualization to you. How effective was it to for you to understand the topic? So the remote center coordinators you can respond through a view chat. Take a minute to think about the topic, the question. How effective was this strategy for understanding different perspectives for the use of visualization in classroom? Okay, I will repeat it. So the somebody has given me a figure 70 percent. Thank you for that. 
Uh, so, the question is how effective was the demonstration of video for understanding of this topic, the different perspectives. Okay, some people are saying understanding as average, there is a lucid use of technology 50, 85 percent, 60 percent. So, some people are saying above average need improvement okay, 50 percent. So, think of the answer that you already provided. You all said that demonstration of visualization or just simple plain showing of visualization is will be effective, you will be able to measure so many things, but I did the same thing in, uh, in our workshop right now. I just demonstrated video and you are saying that it was not some many of you are saying that it was not effective or I have scores of 50 to 60 percentage as my average score. Though some of you have been generous and have gave me above average 70, 80 percent of uh, scores. So, let us look at the characteristic of this content. This is basically at a recall or understand level if you ask me at this moment. So, this is just information transfer to you through visualization. So, what we are going to see now is what educational research talks about simple demonstration of visualization or how visualization have to be used. So, this is again information transfer to you. And what research has found is the following. So, here are some uh, research results that the first thing, the prime, the summary of all this research is that the way the instructor teaches with the visualization has a profound effect on the learning effectiveness. In fact, this statement goes is even stronger that for even for a well designed visualization, even if the visualization has all the components and all the interactivity, the learning effectiveness depends strongly on the way a teacher teaches with it. So, this is a summary, but the first point still does not tell us which way is better than which way. So, now let us look at the second and third point. This keeps uh, cropping up in several dozen studies that showing demo only is not very effective. I have just listed two here. And then this last point makes it, says it even strong, even more strongly that the potential benefits of visualization, the potential benefits that we have talked about over the last two days is lost if students merely watch the visualization. So, study after study is telling us that simply showing the demos, simply playing it in class is not as effective and if anything the purpose of using the visualization, the potential benefit gets lost. So, what you have seen from research is that Research says that just demonstration of visualization is not good or it is not proven to be an effective strategy. What research recommends is use uh, engage the students with some activities and that is where the active learning strategies that you learned across the workshop or that you have been doing across this workshop comes into play. So, we will continue with the demonstration of visualization for some more time and see what the importance of active learning strategies are for integrating visualization in your classroom. And again, let us first use the help of research here and it says that active learning based strategies with visualization led to improved outcomes than mere view. So, I have just summarized a number of studies here and there is some jargon here. We will look at examine each of this jargon, but it says that instead of mere viewing, you should do something called active learning based visualization strategies. So, um, what is meant by it? Again here, this is a summary that visualizations lead to improved learning only if used well. What does if used well mean? Mere demonstration or playing is not enough. So, do not let the students only watch, look at this first picture. Instead, 
see if students can directly interact with the visualization. So in lab or homework, if students can actually go change the variables, play with the visualization, interact with it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. This, it's a little hard to do this in a lecture classroom, but at home or in, even in a lab, it may be possible to do it. So in such cases, the teacher should provide some activities. So we, I'll, I'll leave this point here. If, we are more, if you're more interested in it, we can discuss it during the Q&A later in the evening. But the focus of this session is within the lecture classroom, if you want to use a visualization, what you need to do is use active learning based strategies. So what is active learning? We have in the last three slides, I used this phrase several times and just said, well, use active learning strategies. So in an active learning strategy, you may have heard this word, but it has a specific meaning and it has a specific role for an instructor and a specific role for a teacher. So the instructor should create carefully designed activities that request students to talk, write, reflect and express this thinking. So the main role of the instructor in an active learning strategy is not to speak. So right now I'm not doing active learning, I'm speaking a lot. But the role of the teacher is to actually create and design these activities. When we were doing activities like polling and think pair share, that's when we were doing active learning. What students do is actually go beyond what they do in a normal class. So in a regular class, there are two main things that a student do. Can I give you 30 seconds to say what these two main things are? What do, what do students do in, a, in normal classes? They watch the instructor, they listen, or we think they're listening, and at most, they're taking down notes of what you write on the board or what's on the slide. So when students go beyond listening and copying of notes, that's when we say that active learning is happening. So what do they do beyond listening and copying of notes? They do this, talking with each other, writing answers to posed questions, doing activities, reflecting on why something happened, reasoning, expressing their reason, and so on. So active learning is something more than simply asking students, did you understand or what doubts do you have? It's actually doing all of this, making them do specific de well-designed activities where they're engaged with the content. Any of the blue slides that you recall from yesterday or even today, for example, uh, this one that you did about 15 minutes ago, this is an active learning strategy because you are talking, you are writing your answer to some question, you are talking with each other and so on. So in this whole uh, workshop, all the active learning activities or strategies that we are using, we have color coded the slides as blue. So that as soon as you see it, you, you think, aha, here is an active learning strategy. Can I use it in my classroom? So that's what you should be thinking. So uh, let me give a small activity for all of you. You have been listening to the visualizations till now. Uh, think of all the set of active learning strategies that we have used across the workshop and note down all of them in your paper and convey it to your remote center coordinator. So you will get a minute to do this. Uh, remote center coordinator, you can just post all the answers through a view chat. So post all the active learning strategies that you have come across in this workshop. Okay, TPS, PI, debate, AVU poll, flip classroom. Poll survey, videos, wiki. Again, videos are not active learning strategies. So, the use of technology in itself is not active learning strategy. Please look at the definition of active learning strategy that was discussed, wiki forum, direct Q&A, screencasting. So again, screencasting, so when, please understand the difference between the use of technology and active learning. Active learning is always involved with the learner. The learner has to do something in the classroom or when he is working with an assignment or uh, outside the classroom and hence uh, 
just mentioning screencast is not active learning screencast with embedded questions is a kind of active learning in flip classroom is a broad instructional strategy you have to mention in flip classroom what kind of active learning strategies we have used how to join wiki group so if you are mentioning the session yes but if you are looking at the procedure it is not an active learning strategy so let me just uh, summarize the key active learning strategies that we did across the various days so there was polling which included peer instruction questions there were think pair shares there were debates and most important i didn't see this from uh, in the chat responses but the self and peer assessment that you did uh, yesterday is actually an active learning uh, strategy you were reflecting on what you were do, what you have done or what was discussed in the classroom and then you were uh, doing some kind of reviewing activity so the self assessment and peer assessment is engaging learner beyond mere listening to the lecture so how to design active learning strategies with visualizations is what we are going to discuss now uh, so important is what is the content centric pedagogical purposes of use of a visualization does it make invisible components visible does it trace motion or trajectory does it slow down or speed up processes or does it give you visual feedback of various system variables so what happens when something changes and how do you design it you have to look at the learning objectives that you have for the particular topic along with the purpose of the uh, the pedagogical purpose of use of visualization so the key is choose a strategy based on the purpose and learning objective purpose comes from the visualization and the content in uh, that is being discussed and the learning objective is what you have already defined so we'll now look at some examples of use of visualization the first strategy is what we are labeling we are calling it as predict outcome so what happens here is that the objective the learning objective is that students should be able to predict the outcome of physical phenomena and the visualization which is the animation or the simulation or even a video it shows the physical phenomena and what do i mean by physical phenomena it could be an experiment where you increase the current and observe what happens to voltage it could be that the speed of a car is increased and you ask what happens to its trajectory it could be that you change the time and ask what happens to the signal so there is some stimulus some in input variable which changes value and you want to see what happens to the output before what happens to the output you want students to be able to predict what happens to the output the first one is fluid flow so this is a pipe it has some fluid like water the blue stuff is water and the red dots are actually the particles of the fluid so they have been visualized as red dots and what you can change in the simulation is the size so when i run the simulation you'll see that this doesn't look like a balloon in, instead it looks like a cylinder you can change the speed of the fluid molecules you can change a number of other parameters and see how the system behaves okay so here's the simulation what i can do is i can change the flow rate i can make it really small i can change the fluid density make it really dense i can change the pressure no I, or i can look at what pressure it is i can add friction and based on all of these i can make prediction so for example one example you can say is what will happen to the fluid flow rate if the fluid density becomes much higher will it increase decrease or stay the same so you want to think of 
prediction questions of this nature. We will actually do a small activity with this visualization. So, uh, what we are trying to do is show you how this particular active learning strategy of predict, observe and uh, then uh, correct or evaluate actually works in a uh, while using visualizations, uh, interactive visualizations like this simulation. So, you already saw a uh, animation or a simulation where a fluid is flowing through a, a pipe or a column uh, and there were various parameters that you could change in the particular fluid uh, flow. So, please go uh, observe this visualization carefully. So, fluid is flowing. Uh, currently, the density is 1000 which is uh, we, the fluid is water 1000 kilogram per meter cube. The flow rate is kept constant at 5000 liters per second. And what I am doing now is measuring the speed. So, I get the speed as 1.6 meters per second and I am also measuring pressure at one particular point. So, it is 126, uh, 127.155 kilo Pascal per second, kilo, kilo Pascal. Now, what you have to tell me is, I am going to increase the fluid density to 1300. So, I am increasing the density of this particular fluid. So, I am pausing the visualization now. I have increased the density to 1300 and the question that I am going to ask is, so I have not pressed enter in that fluid density column. Predict what happens to the speed and pressure when density of liquid increases to 1300. So, I will just give you some time to think about it. So, this is conducted as a peer instruction activity. You can post the answer through a view chat. We will not use a view pool, we will use the a view chat. What happens to the pressure at the same point? So, we are not measuring a different point, we are measuring the same point and what happens to the velocity that is the speed when density gets increased to 1300. You can discuss within your remote center and then give the answer. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 1, 3, 3. So, I am having various options. So, there is a wide variety of options that is coming in. Okay, let me just show you what exactly will be the answer. So, observe carefully what happens when the density increases. So, when the density increases, the pressure at the same point increases. So, the correct option was C. So, let us not go to the, I am not going to detail you the science behind this, but think of what you did just now. You observed some phenomena, you gave an answer, you observed an animation. A question was asked on which you gave a prediction. Now, you are going to see, you are being shown what the correct answer is or you are actually observing what exactly is going to happen. Now, the next thing that a teacher does at this point, for example, in this particular case, they will be discussing why this happened, they will be going into details of this particular phenomena and uh, they will be just uh, so, the content that the teacher wants to teach at this point is being detailed through this particular activity and look at the involvement that students will be having. So, as remote center participants, you had put an answer and you see that it is either different or it is the same. So, uh, I think ma majority of remote centers got the answer wrong, which means now they will start thinking why their answer was wrong, they will discuss it with the person who got a right answer. So, that is what active learning strategies plus visualization can bring into classroom. So, we will now look at us another example. Uh, again, uh, over here, this will not be a uh, simulation, 
but it will be use of a, an image and a video. These are also examples of visualization. So, in the second example, in the second example, the picture here, uh, I think what you can see is a man without his face. So, he, you can see a man's hands, he is pushing a cart. So, this is a clear plastic cart here and there is a balloon which is suspended in the cart. So, what the man does in the simulation is actually pushes the cart, he gives it a jerk in this direction to the left and then students can observe what happens to the balloon, does it stay, does it move to the left, does it move to the right and so on. So, this is the image with all the labeled uh, items labeled, so this is a labeled diagram. So, this is a cart and it is moving in this particular direction and there is a balloon over here. So, currently it is stationary, this man is going to push it in the forward direction. Now, the question asked by the teacher for prediction is what happens to the balloon when the uh, person pushes the cart. So, any quick answers remain stationary moves to right. So, this direction is left and this direction is right. Right side stationary, balloon will move with the cart. Okay. Let me just show you what actually happens. You saw it? The balloon was actually moving towards the left or towards the forward direction. Why? There is an additional force of air pressure. So, this is not like uh, while you are standing in a bus and you get a jerk back. So, there is an actual additional force of air pressure along with the force of the string that is there and which makes the balloon moves forward. So, you see again what has happened? All of you invested in an answer and saw that either it is getting wrong or it got right. Now, it, this will lead to discussion. So, let us see the details of this particular strategy. It is a three phase process. In phase 1, we are calling it the observe phase. The teacher plays the visualization only up to the point where the problem is described, where the st stimulus is shown. So, for example, in the fluid flow problem, the teacher will say that ok, I am going to increase the fluid density, but the teacher does not actually increase the density. Or in the balloon problem, the teacher say place the video or the animation till the man is about to move the cart. So, that students understand what is the setup, it is like setting up the problem. This is very important, pause and do not show the result yet. What students are doing in this phase is observing the setup of the problem. Then in phase 2, at this point there is a predict activity, we call it the predict phase. Teacher asks questions to make the prediction, what will happen if the man mo uh, gives a push to the left, right, what happens to the balloon and students actually make the prediction. There are a number of ways you can do it here, you can have students write in their notebooks individually or you can do a polling here, the balloon will move to the left, right, stay the same. So, this is the most important phase where students are doing the prediction and note that the visualization is paused at this moment. After students make the prediction, there is something which we call as a correct phase. Students do a, the teacher shows the rest of the visualization and students does a, do a self check of their prediction by simply watching the result on the visualization. So, in the balloon example, as soon as the teacher plays the visualization again, the students see that the balloon did not move backward as they had expected, instead it moves forward and then there is a discussion phase. So, again summarizing the three phases here, observe, predict and correct and in any, any this is a very, uh, there, there are two such common scenarios that we do a lot in. Uh, engineering. 
where uh, we want st students to be able to predict what happens if something is changed. So do the pause, may, do an activity in the pause uh, when the pa uh, visualization is paused and then have students correct it by playing the rest of the visualization. So you saw the first strategy was observe, predict and correct. So there are several such uh, strategies which you can use with visualization. We are going to discuss two more uh, strategies. The first of which is calculate output. Uh, this is typically used for uh, content which are having some uh, calculations or mathematical elements in it. So, we will describe the activity. The slides will be given to you and uh, the slides will have link to the visualizations. So, you can go through these visualizations during the lab which is going to happen after the session. Uh, so, go th just listen to the video at this point. Okay, so let us move on to the next strategy which is similar, but here in the next strategy we are looking at more mathematical problems and we are calling this strategy as calculate output. So here the learning objective is that students should be able to calculate the output or the next step of a process or of a problem. For example, there is a program, a computer program is running step by step. So students should be able to say what happens when the program ends or what happens when the next step of the program is uh, executed. So if you are, this, this is a very good strategy to use while doing mathematical problem solving with visualization. Observe phase, teacher plays the visualization up to the pro point where the problem is described. Do not show the result yet, pause before that. Students observe the first part. Predict phase or calculate phase, actually this should I think this is a typo, it should say calculate phase. Ask students to calculate the next step or the output and do this either individually or in groups. Depends on how hard the problem is and uh, you can do a small think pair activity here. The goal is for students to actually do the calculation and get the answer. The problem was in the visualization and the third phase is again the correct phase where they can, where this teacher shows the rest of the visualization which has the answer to the output and the students check their answer and do a discussion of why their answer was right or wrong. So in all these examples re remember that we are splitting instead of sh showing the visualization as one long, uh, in one long session, we are breaking it up, we are simply pausing it, having students do an activity and then resuming it so that students can check the answer to the activity. So uh, this was the second uh, uh, active learning strategy where instead of prediction in the second phase students actually did calculation. So there were some specific calculation but again the process remains the same. You show visualization up to a point and then you ask them to do an activity then you show what happens in the visualization. So this is a standard procedure for the observe, predict. Uh, correct or observe calculate correct kind of active learning strategies when you use it with visualization. So we will now look at one more uh, active learning strategy which is uh, device explanation. So uh, this is the third active learning strategy that you can use with visualization. It is called device explanation. Uh, this serves a different purpose than the observe predict. But uh, the procedure is almost similar, so have a do listen to this particular explanation. The third strategy is actually not for problem solving as much as for coming up with explanations. So here the idea is that there is some physical phenomena which is happening. Again it can be an experiment and the example I have shown here is a radiation pattern. There is an antenna here at the center and the antenna is moved, it is shaken a little bit and some radiation pattern comes up. So again there is some situation where one object is changed, some parameter is changed and then its effect is seen. The goal here is for students to explain why that effect happened in the sense come up with the underlying microscopic explanation. 
this is something we do usually in the first class in a particular topic or a first class of a module that we say if you wiggle the antenna in a sinusoidal fashion you will see a radiation pattern which has a certain shape and we go ahead and do a mathematical derivation. So in this strategy what is more effective is doing this visualization activity before you explain the theory. So as the very first activity before you even explain any definition, any jargon, the very first class of a particular of a new topic you can do this activity. So what you do is first you actually do an observe phase. Here play the visualization, play the entire visualization so that the student sees what is happening but it is a completely new phenomena, they have never encountered it before. Then there is an activity as usual, the activity is where teacher asks the students to devise an explanation or a reason for why the process happened. So create your own reason, there are students can come up with multiple reasons and in fact that is what we want devise your own explanation for why this happened. These sort of activities are best done collaboratively. So you can do this as a think and pair. So each student first writes down what they think is the reason, then they pair up with a neighbor and compare reasons. And the role of students is to actually devise explanations. And in the third phase, again the third phase is where the teacher brings it all together. The teacher discusses the different explanations, so we call this is the share phase of the think pair share. So the teacher says okay will this pair tell me their explanations, then will the student there please share their explanation and the teacher along with the students do a pros and cons analysis, why some reason is valid, why some reason is not valid. So it is not about why the student was right or wrong, but the goal is some experiment is shown and collectively you come up with different reasons and then do a pros cons analysis and finally you arrive at the scientifically correct explanation. After that you can do what you normally do, you do your theory and so on. So in this strategy all we are doing is changing the order in which we normally show the uh, uh, visualization. Typically what we do is we do a theory first we explain and then we simply demo the visualization. Instead. The recommendation is you reverse the order, show the visualization, do not say anything before that. Ask students themselves to come up with an explanation and then do a discussion. Interestingly, just before we did the third video, device explanation, uh, RC1206 just posted a question, what can we do in case of derivations? So uh, it was a very good question at an appropriate time and I hope you have received your answer. So in case of derivations, there is a phenomena behind of which you are actually using the derivation for. So show them the phenomena, explain what it is all about and then start with the derivation which makes it easier for the students also to understand why they are deriving something. So many a, many a times it happens that in engineering education students just mug up how to derive formulas without actually learning where its application is. So showing them a visualization of the exact phenomena, making them discuss about the phenomena and then doing the derivation make it meaningful for the learner and makes your teaching learning more effective when in case of uh, derivations or those kind of theoretical aspects uh, that you have to discuss within your course. We will have tea and be back at 10.45 pm where we will summarize the session and then move to Q&A.